today I wanted to create a video about the difference between the old way and the new way of making model engineering. But first I'd like to welcome H74, a new microcosm um, petrol engine, four-stroke, two-cylinder, available at uh, EngineDIY.com. And it's just appeared there. It's under $1,000. Uh, it's got a water pump. It's got a governor. It's got a radiator, uh, twin cylinder. It's very, very beautiful and nice sounding engine. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to mention that. This engine, like the one that's coming, the V-Twin by Sisson, these engines are both uh, CAD CAM engines that are made in small runs. And I do thank Engine DIY for being there, for selling this kind of stuff to us. There are engines available, the four cylinders uh, and other engines, small run um, created. This one has appeared on YouTube uh, and my uh, emails with Engine DIY say that um, they have had a look at it. Uh, they think it would probably be very expensive. The guy who's making this, as you can see, it's a CAD CAM job that he's actually outsourced. So rather than your traditional model engineer will get the plans, work from those, create something. Uh, and yet this guy's made a plan and just outsourced all the manufacturing. That means that he can make more of them. You know what I mean? And he said in his uh, YouTube that he uh, that it has some parts that are made by 3d printing but that the production version these would be metal so he is eyeing up production uh, as i said v12 would be expensive have a listen sounds so that's the new wave that's CAD cam and even outsourcing it uh, the old way um, handmade I mean my engine was very handmade and didn't didn't even have I don't have machine tools so um, that's one way of doing it you just go into your garage and pick up junk but um, the traditional model engineer works from plans and I came across one the other day when I was meant to be doing a computer job uh, this is in Christchurch New Zealand and the customer was building museum quality uh, engines from hand so I want to show you that um, and and think about the changes between what we're seeing coming from China and the uh, the way that things were done, which this guy uh, represents. Enjoy. I'm here doing supposedly doing computer work. Uh, this is uh, this is K88, a scratch built model of a steam engine the man I'm with makes models on this tiny little lathe that's that's his workshop if we have a look over here we can see one in the making see the kind of work that he puts in to scratch building and there's my finger so you can see how big it is the detail in those little connecting rods it's just remarkable so some pretty good tools some pretty good skills just beautiful um, 
feel very lucky to see this. And uh, now this engine, K88, was pulled out of a stop bank. The original was put in a stop bank as a uh, as a protection uh, to, to, for the built-up railway to uh, from the river. So they put it beside the stop bank. It was pulled out many years later. I'll show you the pictures. And then it was rebuilt in Ashburton, which is near where I grew up. And uh, this fellow has built this beautiful one here. What was your name again? James Hardwood. James, how long did that take to build? About five years. Five years. And how long ago did you do it? Yeah, I finished it in... I started it in 1975, I think, from memory, and finished it about 1980. Goodness me, it's perfect, though. I took it over to the Australian Railway Modeler Show in Melbourne and managed to win their top prize. Oh my goodness, I'm not surprised. Oh, well, yes, there, there it is. That's K88. Um, that's it. That little gun for it. Yeah. That was a picture by the late, yeah. painting by the late Bill Stewart. Yes. Now that's not the original, is it? No, yeah, that's, yes. The original painting by W. Stewart. Yeah. Goodness me, I've become a collector's thing as well. Yeah, that's actually 87. Yes, I see that. Lincoln. Lincoln. Beautiful though. Mm. Thank you so much for showing me. It's been a real pleasure. Oh, yeah. to get I can't believe it. It's just so tiny. Thank you. You see on that there, it's got two um, crankshafts and four ex eccentrics. No, two eccentrics in there. So, um, yeah, just beautiful. Well, whoever's receiving it will be pretty happy. Do they? Do they order? subsequent engines from you or is it different people you know, i've got one person over there he's got um more money than yeah he needs yes yes literally i mean millions of yes pounds. yes and he's that's a, his hobby he's pop music impresario he's oh is he really he owns studios ah okay you know, he took me around one, one day and he's got about oh, i don't know how many 30 or 40 gold discs hanging on the wall yeah of various people that, you know were you talking by skype or something hmm? You were Skyping to him? No, no, I was over there. Oh, okay. Remarkable. Yeah, I've got all sorts of pictures here of things. That's all I've got, you see, I've sold the damn things. Yeah, and these are some that you've built. Yeah, both of these are owned by people, wouldn't they? But you must be happy to know that they are... Um, they are out there. And I mean, that one there, he paid me £17,500 for it. <laughs> wow. That, that, is, daughter's wedding that is amazing. It did it pay for our daughter's wedding in England. And how, how long ago was that? Um, that would have been the late 90s. So that's an absolute top craftsman effort. That's the price, you know, that, the effort you must have put in. Mm, and, uh, that's very unusual because it was one of the early London Northwestern three-cylinder compounds. Yeah. You can see the inside cylinder there was about 26 it's inches huge. diameter. It's massive. The ones outside were about 10 inches, yeah. the little ones on the outside. Fascinating. Thank you. I've yeah. never, never seen one of those. Copy of the original works drawing, and there's the mate that goes with it, you see. This. So you work off the drawings, oh, yeah. and that's why it takes so long. Oh, there's the huge internal cylinder you mentioned. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And you can see it there. Yeah. That's a section Goodness through it, me. whereas that is looking at it from the outside. Yes. Fascinating. So that is a split halfway about there. One looking that way and one looking this way. So what was your career? You're retired now, but <laughs> were you a professional engineer? No. I was nine years a soldier in the British Army. Oh, Okay. And I did a lot of electronics and stuff there. Yeah. And I finished up um, working for a computer car. I actually worked for English Electric, actually. So it's similar to me, you know, have a interest in engines and models, but work yeah. as, as electronics and computers. And then, as it came, the sort of things that you work on, which are throwaway bits, it, yes. no fix it anymore. Yes. And the original ones I worked on were all originally transistorized. Yes. And there was about, oh, a huge room with about 20 or 30 cabinets and tape decks going every which way, you know. I saw some when I first went to university. They were old by then. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that was the thing I worked on originally, and then eventually I was made redundant. Yeah. And I got a job with a little factory making mobility equipment. Ah. And they shut that down and moved it to Auckland, and so the factory manager and me started up our own business in town. We ran that for 20 years. I spent most of my day at a welding bench there, and I saw making wheels.